Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about air pressure. And air pressure is when the air around you pushes on you and that causes pressure. So you may have encountered this with a balloon. I can breathe in and then put air in the balloon. And then air enters the balloon, okay, and it pushes on the rubber of the balloon, which expands because you're pushing out in all directions on the balloon. And then when I open up the balloon, it goes and all the air will flow out because the pressure of the air in the balloon flows out and, and then the balloon contracts down. Okay? Now there's another cool little demonstration you can see about air pressure. If we take a straw and put it in water and close the top with your finger and then lift the straw out, what happens is that the water will stay in the straw and not fall out because air pressure is basically supporting the water from underneath and won't let it fall out until you release your finger. Air pressure comes from the fact that air is actually made up of lots of little tiny atoms or molecules, not to scale. Okay, These are going to represent our atoms or molecules in the air, and they're bouncing around in the air. They're just flying around every which way. Okay, And then what happens is, is sometimes they bounce off someone Okay, or something. They could collide against each other, but if they're bouncing off of me, Okay, then they're actually bouncing off, and I feel them bouncing off of me. Now, you can't feel an individual atom hit you. You know, that's not, you're not going to feel that at all, right? But lots and lots of little atoms bouncing off you all at the same time will press into you, and you can actually, well, you don't feel it per se, but you can notice if they're not there, and that's basically when you feel like a suction or something, when the atoms are not bouncing against you. And so the whole time we talk today, remember that pressure is just little tiny atoms bouncing off something to cause, cause a force to kind of press into that, okay? Next. I have here a little round uh, piece of rubberized foam, and if I take it and put it on top of a soda can, I can turn it into a suction cup. And you know what a suction cup is. A suction cup is something that allows other things, to st uh, something to stick to different surfaces. And I've got a suction cup attached to the can right here. So uh, I could take this can, and I can put it down on the tray, and I can pick up the whole tray. I can hold the tray upside down, and it stays there, and it even just hangs there on the side. And if I try and pull it off the tray, it doesn't come off the tray. It's actually pretty hard. I can slide it off, but pulling it straight off takes a lot of force. And in fact, if we look at the circle here, if we, at the instructions, it tells us how much force is on a circle this size. At about standard pressure here, uh, which is due to the atmosphere over our heads, um, the pressure is about 220 pounds. 220 pounds of air is pushing down on this circle. And where's the pressure coming from? Well, it's because we've got miles and miles of air over our heads. Okay, and that's all sitting down on our heads. Just like if you dive into a deep part of a swimming pool, you can feel that as you go to the deep end, your ears can feel the pressure of the water on your head. All right? In the same way, all the air over our heads is pushing down on us. And that comes through in uh, another case. We can use that air and then use it to do cool little experiments. And so let's use it to do a little recycling. So here I have an aluminum can, and I put a little bit of water on the bottom. And then that water is now starting to boil, and it's filling up the can with steam. All right, And the steam, of course, is hot. And we can talk about some other time how, how the steam uh, fills up the can and pushes all the air out. And I'm going to take this can and I'm going to turn it upside down into some water so that all the water inside that is now gas and forced the air out will go away. And so when I turn the can upside down, all the air, basically all the pressure inside will go away and the pressure of the atmosphere will then crush it. So here we go. Ready? And go. And here you've got a little recycling due to the pressure of the atmosphere around me. Well, you can take a juice box. I can get the juice out of the juice box by squeezing the sides. If I squeeze the sides, you get a little juice out, all right, and then you got to eat it fast before it spills all over the table. Or, if you want to be a little cleaner, you can pull with your mouth and get the juice out. But you're not really pulling with your mouth. The box is still getting squished. All you do is kind of reduce the air pressure in your mouth and let the atmosphere do the work. The miles and miles of air over our heads are squishing down on the juice box, and you kind of relax your mouth and, and get the air out of your mouth, and the air around us shoves the juice up in your mouth. And why should you do all the work? 
All right, the very last thing I want to show you is a cool little trick to do next time you're in a restaurant. You need to take your glass of water and you need a nice big straw. Take your straw and your glass, put the straw down in the glass and cover the top with your finger. We've talked about how that stops and, uh, the, the water in the straw, so you stored some water in there. But to get more water in the straw, I could let go of the top and jam the straw down really fast and then put my finger back on when it's to the bottom. Boom. All right, and now I've got a little bit more water in the straw. If I keep doing that over and over again fast enough, I can create a little fountain. So here we go. A little up and down motion. You can spray water all over the table, all over your friends, and make a complete mess.